You can stay in this cabin and fight it out. Or face the men who are waiting to lynch you. Either way, it's a poor choice. Have gun. Will travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875. The Carlton Hotel. Headquarters of a man called Paladin. Oh, oh, good morning, Mr. Wong. Mr. Chang. Good morning. Yes. Oh, oh please, uh, Miss Wong. Uh, at the Carlton Hotel, you speak to me as Hey Boy. Everyone does. Oh, yes. I forget. Good morning, Hey Boy. Uh, good morning. Oh, um, you did not meet Mr. Paladin before he left. No. The lady in charge was showing me what the new duties would be each morning. He left very early. Oh, yes. But uh, in a few days, he'll return. Then I introduce you to my very good friend. Oh, that would be very great pleasure. Oh, yes. Oh, no, 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 no. Something is wrong? Oh, when you make Mr. Paladin's bed, you make it uh, West Point style. West Point? I don't know what you mean, West Point. Oh, I show you. Oh, hey, Mr. Paladin, very particular about bed made. Army way. Is the party done in the army? Oh, no, no, no. But he was several years ago. Oh, yes. yes he said it is only proper way to make bed. Oh, no. uh, you do not tuck a blanket on the corner like this. Oh, oh no. no. You watch careful now. Right. First you fold on the bottom side like this. Yes. Then you hold up the end of blanket and tuck on the corner like this. Oh, yes. yes. Now, drop blanket and tuck on the whole side. Very smooth as well, Mr. Chang. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, hey, boy. Ah, yes. Hey, boy. May I please try other side? Okay. Mr. Paladin teaches you to make bed like this? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I learned many things from Mr. Paladin. Oh. <laughs> While I work at Carlton Hotel, perhaps you teach me many things. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It would be a great pleasure. This is Frank Knight speaking for Longines, the world's most honored watch. It's wonderful to win a Nobel Prize in science, a Pulitzer Award in literature, an Olympic gold medal in sports. In the field of time, did you know that Longines watches have won more great public honors for excellence, elegance, and accuracy than any other watch in the world? This is true. For close to a century, the highest authorities have ranked Longines watches as the finest achievement in the science and art of watchmaking. Yet, for a surprisingly modest cost, you may own or proudly give a Longines the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored gift, styled with distinction, cased in precious metal, promising a lifetime of faultless timekeeping. See your authorized Longines Whitnor jeweler. He will be honored to serve you. The job was finished. The man who had hired me in Salinas had given me an extra hundred dollars to prove that he was pleased, and I was on my way back to San Francisco. It was good to be alone on horseback. As I rode through the verdant coastal valley, I was reminded of Illinois, as I had known it when I was younger. In my imagination, I could see myself riding along on my father's farm, everything very green and sparkling, and wonderfully new. Hours became minutes. Then suddenly I realized it was almost sundown, and I was lost. I'd apparently taken the wrong turn at a fork a few miles back. 
My plans had been to stay overnight in Morgan Hill with an old friend, but now I'd have to bed down on the trail after I found water. While I was looking for a stream, I saw some smoke circling over the treetops a couple of hundred yards ahead. A closer look revealed a small cabin nestled in a grove of eucalyptus. Hey, oh, easy, boy. Don't come no closer. This is private property. Well, hold your fire. I'm not trespassing. This is my land. Strangers ain't welcome. How come you're nosing around here? I was looking for a creek. My horse needs water. People don't look for creeks in these parts. Everybody around here as friendly as you? Just be on your way, mister. Look, I've been riding all day. If you look at my horse, you can tell he needs water. You got a well? I'd be willing to pay. How much? You tell me it's your water. You willing to pay two dollars? That's your price? Let me see the money. Here. All right. You can have the water. Dismount and walk your horse up to that trough by the pump. I'll be right behind you with this right. All right, walk. You're mighty free with that rifle. There's been a lot of horse stealing lately. You got a lot of horses? You out back, they're good ones. They're worth stealing. I don't take any chances. I see. A man don't just happen to wander onto my land. This ain't on the road to no place. Well, I wouldn't be here if I hadn't got lost. I was on my way to Morgan Hill. You're better than ten miles from Morgan Hill. Huh. Not much water in the trough. There's more when it's gone. I'm afraid I won't have any luck picking up that trail before morning. It's going to be a dark night. Dirk? What is it, Agnes? Supper's on the table. I'll be in in a minute. What's he doing here? Watering his horse. Dirk, I heard the shooting. What was it? Nothing. Who's that man with you? A stranger. Is he staying for supper? No. I'll need more water. Well, you just pump it yourself. Dirk, why did you hit him? I don't trust him. You killed him. He ain't dead. He ain't moving. Why'd you do it? I aim to find out who he is. It looks like he's breathing. He's breathing. There ought to be something in this wallet telling who he is. Here. Hmm. You read the printing on this card? I see. It says, Have gun, will travel, wire, Paladin, San Francisco. His name is Paladin. And that card means he's a hired gun. You don't think... I might have known come snooping around here near dark saying he's lost. You think the ranchers hired him? Yeah. Probably old Fred Mosley. I got more of his horses than any others. Don't pay, really, does it? What do you mean? Always running, hiding, pretending. It uh, don't mount to a thing. We could make a better living digging clams on the beach. Horse Stephen don't amount to a thing, Dirk. Now, don't start that again. You just get us ready to move out of here by sunup. What are you going to do with him? I don't know. I never killed a man before. It's... Just might be the first time. What do you need? You need lots of dollars during sicknesses. You need lots of dollars for an accident. You need the kind of protection that only mutual love Omar sells. What do you need? You need the health insurance that is ideal for young families because it offers you special savings. The younger you are when you start your Mutual of Omaha hospital, surgical, and income protection plan, the lower the cost. 
Here's what you need. You need Young Family Health Insurance. Long-term benefits at low cost by Mutual Benefit Health and Accident Association. Call your local Mutual of Omaha agent in the yellow pages or write Mutual of Omaha, Omaha, Nebraska for information on plans available in your state. The long-term, low-cost protection every young family needs is available now. Write for details on this modern, flexible protection that can be tailored to your exact needs. Write Mutual of Omaha, Omaha, Nebraska. Somebody had exploded a stick of dynamite inside my head. I tried to reach up and stop the throbbing, but my hands wouldn't move. They were tied behind my back. I tried to move my legs, but I only felt the rope that was binding them together. Finally, when I was able to focus my eyes, I found I was lying on a bed in the corner of the cabin. In the middle of the room, there was a table with a dim lamp on it, and a woman, Agnes, was bending over a box, stuffing it with pots and pans. She must have heard me move because she looked up. Oh, finally woke up, huh? Uh, why... Why did he hit me? You can be thankful he didn't kill you. Why would he want to kill me? We're on to you, mister. Dirk thought you looked suspicious and he was right. He found your card. We know you was hired by the ranchers to come after Dirk. I don't know what you're talking about. I suppose you deny your name's Paladin. No. That's my name. Well, don't be tricking me. You can be honest with me because I saved your life. Dirk wanted to kill you, but I talked him out of it. You can thank me for that. I'm grateful. I do thank you. That ain't your skin I'm worried about. I'm just not going to have my husband start killing. Well, why would the ranchers hire me to get Dirk? There you go again. Now, listen. I don't know who your husband is or what he's done. I was lost. The smoke from your cabin led me here. I wasn't hired by any ranchers. I don't know anybody this side of Morgan Hill. Now, believe me. I'm telling you the truth. If you are, we wouldn't have to move on. I'm telling you the truth. We could stay here. Dirk? Dirk? Yeah? Come in here. Do you believe me? Maybe I do. I wasn't lying. I'd like to believe you. Maybe because I'm tired of running. Maybe because I like this valley, this cabin. Seems like a home. I told you to keep the door closed. What do you want? He woke up. Is that why you called me in here? I was talking to him. I think you ought to hear what he's got to say. We don't have time to freight with bounty hunters. I got the wagon hitched up. Are you done with the packing? He says he wasn't hired by the ranchers. <sighs> He's been giving you some soft talk. You always was a sucker for soft talk. I wasn't soft talking your wife. The ranchers didn't hire me. If he's telling the truth, we don't have to run. I'm not taking any chance. Dirk! Douse the light. Get down on the floor. Can you see anything? No. No, it's pitch dark out there. Come on out, Dirk. We know you has been stealing our horses. Come on out. That's Fred Mosley. Come and get me, Mosley. There's the answer to your soft-talking friend, Agnes. Listen to me. She was beginning to believe you. I was right. You was hired by the Mosley gang. I don't know Mosley. I didn't know you were a horse thief. You ain't even a good liar. Look, if you'll untie me, I'll prove to you I'm not with those men. I'll help you out of here and see to it you get a fair trial. Otherwise, they'll hang you. Dirk, maybe what he's saying... he's tricking us again. Don't listen to him, Agnes. He led those men here. I should have killed you in the first place. And I shoot you now, but I got a better plan. Mosley! Yeah? I got your man tied up in here. What man? The man you hired to come after me. 
We didn't hire him, man. He says he was hired by you. His name's Paladin. I'm going to shoot him if you don't leave me be. It won't work. You're wasting your breath trying to fool a jerk. If you don't come out, we'll burn you out. Do you believe me now, Dirk? Maybe he was telling the truth. It don't matter now whether I believe you or not. They're going to burn the cabin. Paladin, what would you do if we untied you? Help to see that your husband doesn't get lynched. Now, how can you do that? Well, there's at least three men out there, and they're not going to settle for anything less than a lynching. No matter what you or anybody else says to him. Besides, what do you care if I hang or not? I believe in a fair trial. A man's guilty, it should be decided in a courtroom. Trial or no trial, I'm going to hang. At least you wouldn't hang tonight. You'll have a chance to hire a good lawyer. Are you coming out, Dirk? Or do you want to stay in there and cry? Paladin, how do you figure on getting me this fair trial you're talking about? Give yourself up. Now, they'll take you nearby. I can follow you and surprise them before they get the rope around your neck. Agnes can go with me with a shotgun. With us undercover in the dark, the odds will be just about even. All right. All right, maybe it'll work. But there's just one thing you didn't mention. What's that? Agnes will stay behind you all the way with that shotgun. And she'll shoot you if you don't do what you just now said. Fair enough. All right, Agnes. On time. <laughs> For 30 years, almost as long as network broadcasting itself, listeners have relied on Lowell Thomas' colorful coverage of the day's events. Why his continuing popularity? Several reasons. For one, Mr. Thomas insists on accuracy in the reports he broadcasts. Listeners know they can rely on his news broadcasts. Two, Mr. Thomas, because of the thousands of acquaintances his globe-circling expeditions have brought him everywhere, adds personal sidelights and high human interest to the day's news giving it added color, dimension, and meaning. Add to this a well-honed talent for integrating many items from many places into one meaningful whole, and you have all the keys to Lowell Thomas' 30-year reign as reporter, lecturer, and CBS radio raconteur. Mr. Thomas and our great staff of CBS newsmen, reporters, correspondents, and commentators see that you're kept well-informed, kept alert to the constantly changing pattern of world events. Clear, colorful, complete. CBS News on CBS Radio. Fred Mosley didn't believe there was another man in the cabin. I hid behind the door, but they didn't bother to come inside. They were only interested in Dirk. Agnes stood outside until they were gone. And a few minutes later, we were on horseback, following the sound of Mosley and his men. Paladin? Yeah? I'm scared. For yourself? For Dirk? For Dirk. Don't think about it. Ain't no cause for me to hold a shotgun on you, is there? No, no, there isn't. Uh, I can feel it. You're different from most. You're clean. There ain't no pretending with you. I know that for sure now. Hold up. I get down. We'll walk from here. Now follow me and be as quiet as you can. There they are. Quiet now. Come on. All right. Let's stop here. A man brought him by my place. He already got the rope tied on his neck. Yeah. Now, the rope over they're ready to slap the horse out from under him. Hurry, Paladin. Uh, stay behind this rock. Keep the shotgun trained on Mosley, but don't shoot unless you have to. I'm going to move up closer. Mosley! Who's that? I got four men with me, armed with shotguns. 
We say you're not going to hang Dirk. Come on out here where I can see you. Not likely. Why do you want to stop a hanging? He's a horse thief. Clear out, Mosley, before we start shooting. How do I know there's four of you? Try us. You don't leave me much choice, mister. We can't fight men we can't see. All right, Tom. You and Bill get on your horses. Mosley, don't try anything. We're leaving. Oh, wait, Mosley, don't do it. Oh, no. Agnes, stay back there. Dirk. Dirk. Paladin. Can you hear me? You cut him down in time, didn't you? He's all right. He ain't moving, but I know he's all right. Ain't he? He's dead. We didn't stop him, did we? Slapped that horse out from under Dirk right before our very eyes. I'm sorry, Agnes. You tried. That's all you could do. You want to cry, Agnes? Go ahead. Uh, It'd help. I don't want to cry. I know it was going to happen one way or another. That's why I was scared. But it's all over now. I'm not scared anymore. How would you like to help solve a mystery? This is a medical mystery, the mystery of MS, multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis is a chronic crippling disease of the central nervous system. It can affect various parts of the body and usually puts its victims in wheelchairs. Those victims, thousands of them, are hit mainly in young adulthood in the age group between 20 and 40. Nearly all of them, when they're told they have multiple sclerosis, say they've never dreamed it could happen to them. As a matter of fact, it can happen to anybody. That's one of the few things we know about MS. Much of the rest is a mystery. But you can help solve that mystery. Its solution will come through painstaking, costly, medical, and scientific research. The money for this research must come from the MS Hope Chest. Help fill that hope chest now. Give new hope to thousands of sufferers from MS by giving to your nearest chapter of the Multiple Sclerosis Society or sending your contribution to MS in care of your local postmaster. Gun will travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed by Norman McDonnell and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hayboy. Tonight's story was written by Frank Michael. Featured in the cast were Vic Perrin, Gene Bates, Joseph Kearns, and Virginia Gregg. This is Hugh Douglas speaking. Join us again next week for Have Gun, Will Travel. Thank you.